talking today to Frank Poulos, who is the uh, chairman of Magnus Energy Technologies. Now, Frank, we, we normally talk uh, about the battery chain and we talk to uh, different producers within that chain. Uh, Magnus Energy Technologies is somewhat different in that you own that battery chain from graphite uh, mining through to battery technology all the way through to battery recycling. Can you introduce us to the business? Uh, yeah, so uh, as you've mentioned, uh, we're in the supply chain sort of from end to end uh, when it comes to lithium ion batteries, where we have um, in the first instance, our project in Tanzania, which is a graphite project, uh, which is able to produce a battery grade anode material without any purification. So very green, high quality product uh, down to being involved in battery plants. So we have a plant in New York, which has recently started production just at small scale, uh, which is scaling up to a semi-autonomous um, um, phase by the end of the year on towards a fully autonomous uh, phase. We then also have a project in Townsville, uh, which is at a feasibility stage, and we are looking at uh, full-scale production and ways of fast tracking that production to having some kind of production by the end of next year for that plant. And, and for that plant, you're talking about, well, both those plants you mentioned is both energy storage and for EV batteries, as in the electrification of transport, is that right? Yeah, that, that's correct here. So it, with both projects, uh, in at the moment, the majority of our offtakes are all, um, oh, the majority, sorry, are on the energy storage side of things. Uh, but we also do have uh, a couple of groups in the transportation space. Uh, so we're making these cells, they could be used in any product, pretty much that uh, produces, that, that requires lithium ion batteries. And can you talk to us a little bit more about your, the board, particularly some of the, the senior figures you have involved offshore? We have a really impressive board, uh, Tim, and uh, that's headed by uh, Professor Stanley Whittingham. As most would probably know, uh, he was recently awarded with the Nobel Prize uh, for the invention of the lithium ion battery. So he was the actual original inventor of the lithium ion battery. Uh, he's based in um, the US in upper state New York, very close to where the, our lithium ion battery plant is uh, located. And we also, um, adding to that, we have um, Mona Dejani. Mona uh, is an advisor to the current Biden administration on renewable energy. Uh, Mona is quite well known in the space uh, when it comes to renewable energy. We also have uh, Professor Richard Petty. Uh, Professor Petty was also um, a recent and previous board member um, of the B20, so top 20 business leaders in the world. So some really impressive individuals, uh, you know, and, and then going down to Zamin, uh, who's an uh, ESG and impact investing specialist, uh, comes from the uh, funds management uh, industry on to uh, Mugunthan uh, Siva. He's also quite well known in the funds management industry locally. So some real impressive individuals uh, who can help us in getting our projects moving forward uh, from a funding side of things, also from a technical side of things. And you wouldn't have the caliber of these individuals, I believe, involved in a company like Magnus if it wasn't for the credibility of the projects that we have going forward. Now, Frank, you mentioned the Biden administration. The, the Biden administration seems to be uh, a lot more commercial when it comes to uh, green energy, particularly with uh, battery production. Is that a, a future source of funding for a company like Magnus? Most are aware the Biden administration has recently announced uh, an infrastructure package of which there's roughly about 20 billion uh, set aside for cell manufacturers of which we're in discussions at the moment with uh, the DOE in the US for some of that funding. Now that funding is available for groups who are in production or literally about to be in production. Uh, so we qualify in that. And as you know, there aren't that many producers of lithium ion batteries in the US. So we're obviously confident that we will receive some funding. Uh, we, our plan is to grow to 10 gigawatt hours very quickly. And we believe that 
that uh, plan that we've put forward to the uh, to the government is something that uh, will you know be of interest to both them and help us grow exponentially because that's the aim from our side and we want to be producing these made in the USA uh, lithium ion batteries which as we've mentioned previously don't have any Chinese input in our supply chain so it's re a real point of difference in the product that we have and we believe that will help us going forward. Now Frank you've recently had a we've recently made a couple of uh, ASX announcements um, sometimes they can be of, of a technical nature. Can you can you give us some um, more colour on what they mean, particularly for investors to understand? Yes, a, a couple of our announcements we've had recently, uh, one yesterday and one a couple of weeks back around uh, the technology that we have. So our cathode technology uh, is a, a, a lithium uh, manganese phosphate technology, but there's a biomineralization technology that goes with it, which allows us to have a higher voltage versus the major technologies out there, which are LFP and NMC, which I'm sure most people are familiar with. So our technology has no cobalt or no nickel, uh, yet is a high performing technology. Now, that technology, apart from having the, a high voltage, also leads to a long life, it's safe. And the other point is fast charging, which goes to our, uh, our previous announcement uh, that we've uh, recently made, uh, where we were able to show that after two and a half thousand cycles, our battery going strong at a 30 minute charge and discharge in um, charging. So the, the relevance there is if I compare it to a Tesla vehicle that uh, most would be familiar with today, uh, if you get one of those long life or um, uh, Tesla vehicles uh, that could sort of do about 550 to 600 Ks per charge, uh, using a Tesla destination charger, it roughly takes uh, you know, 12 hours to charge it uh, from you know, uh, a point that the battery has no charge, uh, sorry, um, is empty to a full charge. Then they also have these fast chargers, which roughly take about 45 minutes. So we're, we're comparing the sort of fast charge um, capabilities. Now, if you were to fast charge that battery, you, you pretty much would get about a thousand charges from that. We're at that two and a half thousand charge rate uh, sorry, two and a half thousand charge rate. Yep, yeah, and uh, we're going strong. Now, if what we're sort of taking that to the next level in the next instance, where we're still going along um, to see how many charges we can get at, but we're also taking now the charge um, time down to ten minutes and then down to six minutes. So they will be game changers in the transportation industry, especially for if we think of trucks, semi-trailers who are on the road all the time, buses, uh, taxis, groups who actually need to be, or who are doing hundreds of kilometers per day, they're unable to rely on, you know, a thousand cycles. Because in that case, you know, the batteries may last for three years if you're lucky. They need thousands of cycles and they need that fast charging. So that's where the relevance of that announcement comes into it. We're also involved in a couple of programs and one being uh, that some of the, your listeners may be uh, uh, in, sort of uh, familiar with. There's a fast charging pro program that has been funded by the New York State government, which is an extra fast charging program for the New York State buses. So we're talking transit buses. We're working with the largest energy provider in New York, which is Con Edison and BAE Systems, which is one of the largest producers of lithium ion, uh, sorry, of um, electric buses. We're providing those batteries. We should have some data coming out in the next few months, but these are real game changers for the transportation industry. So apart from just producing the cells, we're also, we also have some really exciting technology that we're working on uh, that could be you know, game-changing for the um, sector as well. 